melody where the music's always bright From history to theory will keep your spirits light Tune in for the stories, the rhythms and the groove Join us on this journey, there's always more to prove The melody, the melody Welcome to the Melody Podcast. I'm your host, James Shelton. Today we're talking about Kurt Cobain, the lead singer for the band Nirvana. Kurt Donald Cobain was born on February 20th, 1967, in the small logging town of Aberdeen, Washington. As a child, Cobain was artistic and had an ear for music. Although, he had a younger sister, Kim, born in 1971. The two were inseparable. They were, separ- they were separated when their parents got divorced. At age nine, Cobain went to live with his father, who eventually remarried, which put more strain on their relationship. In the early 1980s, Cobain went to live with his mother and her boyfriend, who were back in Aberdeen. It was during his high school days back home that Cobain was able to demonstrate his artistic talent, his artistic talents through his love for drawing. When Cobain was introduced to punk rock music, a seed was planted that would forever change his life. He discovered the, Vel- the Melvins, a local pop rock group, and became friends with one of its members, Buzz Osborne. It was Osborne who exposed Cobain to more punk bands, but his new found entrance didn't take Cobain away from self-destructive habits. Throughout high school, Cobain would get deeper into the drinking and drug scene. He also was fighting with his troubled mother and didn't get along with his step- stepfather. Cobain spent much of 1984 and 1985 living a nomadic life staying with friends or sleeping in public buildings to avoid his family problems. In July of 1985, Cobain was arrested for vandalizing some buildings and was later fined and given a suspended sentence. Months later, Cobain got his first band together, Fecal Matter. Despite recording some tracks, the band never went anywhere. Eventually, Cobain began collaborating with bassist Chris Novosak and a local drummer named Aaron Burkhardt joined them. The fledgling band first public performance was in 1987 at a house party. Around this time, Cobain began his first serious relationship with a young woman named Tracy Marander. Despite financial restraints, the couple re- lived a relatively happy life in Olympia. Starting in 1988, Cobain's musical ambitions began moving forward. His band agreed on the name Nirvana and released their first track, Love Buzz, on a small label. Around the same time, Brooke Harden was replaced by Chad Channing on the drums, and the band was making headway in Seattle's music scene. In 1989, Nirvana released their first album, Bleach, which failed to make a big impression. What was evident, however, was Cobain's songwriting and skills and what would become their hallmark blend of heavy metal and punk. As the band forged on, 1990 became a fateful year for Cobain and the rest of Nirvana. Cobain met rocker Courtney Love at a Portland nightclub in 1990, but their romantic relationship would later would develop later. Nirvana also got the opportunity to, to tour with Sonic Youth that same year, and after various changes brought in former Scream band member Dave Grohl to replace Channing on drums. In 1991, Nirvana signed with a major label, Griffin Records, and released their second studio album, Nevermind, which henceforth gave them their grunge label. Nirvana's single Smells Like Team Spirit became their biggest hit, pushing their album to number one on the music charts and establishing Cobain as an exception songwriting talent of his era. With Nirvana's popularity skyrocketing into the mainstream, Cobain was conflicted on the direction his music was going. As someone who built his artistry on the anti-embellishment sentiments, Cobain began feeling he was losing control of his fe- future. 
he began using heroin to ease his stress and some health issues occurred. Before the release of Nevermind, Cobain reconnected with Courtney Love, who was fronting the band Hole. The two drove into the whirlwind romance, and in February 1992, Cobain and Love got married and had a daughter, Frances Bean, that August. But the relationship was built on unsteady ground, as both were heavy drug users. At one point, social services threatened to take their daughter away after Love's Vanity Fair interview came out, in which she admitted to shooting up heroin while carrying Frances. After a difficult and expensive court battle, the couple managed to keep their family intact. But Cobain and Love also had their fair share of problems with each other. In 1993, the Seattle police had to break up a violent dispute at the couple's house. The two were fighting over Cobain's guns at the residence, which resulted in the police confiscating them as well as arresting him for assaulting Love. While Cobain dealt with personal struggles professionally, he was at the top of his game. In 1993, Nirvana released In Your Turo, which scored to number one on the music charts. His deeply personal lyrics reflected his anger towards the recording industry with tracks like Radio Friendly Unit Shifter, as well as his softer side with Heart Shaped Box, which is said to have been about love. In the fall of 1993, Cobain and the band performed for MTV's Unplugged in New York City and also toured in Europe. While in Europe, Cobain took time to spend with with his wife, Love, and daughter, Frances. But while at his hotel in Rome, Italy, he purposely overdosed on drugs and fell into a coma. Love found him and was immediately taken to the hospital. When he returned to the States, Cobain's psych psychological state worsened. On March 18, 1994, Love called authorities because Cobain had taken medication and locked himself into a closet with guns. When the police arrived, they determined he was not suicidal, but as a safety precaution, confiscated the medication and firearms. Shortly after, Love pleaded with Cobain to get clean, which she was trying to do herself. He checked into rehab cl- a rehab clinic in L.A., but left days later. On April 5, 1994, in the guest house behind his Seattle home, a 27-year-old Kurt Cobain committed suicide. He placed a shotgun in his mouth and fired, killing him instantly. He left a lengthy suicide note in which he addressed his many fans as well as his wife and young daughter. While his death was officially ruled as suicide, conspiracy theories have circulated that Love may have act- had something to do with his death. Soon after Cobain's death, Nirvana released The Unplugged Session, which topped album charts, and two years later, From the Muddy Banks of Wishka, a collection of songs that also was a commercial win for the band. However, legal battles concerning Cobain's unreleased music began brewing between Go and Novosak, and Love in 2002. And in 2002, the three, final found sol- the three finally found solution, resulting in the release of Nirvana, and later with the Lights Out 2004 and Silver the Best of the Box 2005. Cobain's suicide was a profound loss, not just for his fans, but for all who are touched by the pain and depression of depression and despair. If you or someone you know is struggling, please reach out for help. The National Suicide Prevention Lifeline is available 24-7 for help. You can contact them at 1-800-273-TALK, that's 1-800-273-8255, or you can text HELLO, H-E-L-L-O, to 741741. Get the help you need today. Do not lose your life because of depression or anything else going on in your life. Get help today. Hey there, business warriors. Tired of the same old corporate talk? Want to dive deep into the fiercest business rivalries on the planet? Then tune in to the Corporate Clash podcast. We're not just talking business. We're talking about head-to-head showdowns. Apple versus Samsung. Feastables versus Hershey's. This is where titans collide. Every episode, we break down the battles, the strategies, and the moves that made these companies global giants. Who's winning the war? Who's going down? And most importantly, 
what can you learn from it all? Whether you're an entrepreneur, a business enthusiast, or just love a good underdog story, Corporate Clash is your ringside seat to the biggest battles in business. Don't miss out. Subscribe now and join us as we uncover who's got the edge in the corporate world. Corporate Clash Podcast, where business gets personal. Nirvana's top five songs are Number five, Drain You. Number four, Come As You Are. Number three, Heart Shaped Box. Number two, Smells Like Teen Spirit. And number one, Lithium. You can check us out on Facebook at The Melody Pod for news and other information. You can listen to us for free on YouTube and iHeartRadio. Thanks for listening. I'll see you next time.